Mayor Wu is announcing the new Boston Police Commissioner. Let's listen in. You'll hear shortly from a couple of very, very important folks that have gotten us to this point. But I wanna just start by saying, it has taken us a while to get here. And I don't just mean the long seven months for our search committee, hosting a thorough and diligent process grounded in community with hundreds of Boston residents weighing in on this very important decision. It has taken us a long time to get here as a city to a day when a young boy growing up in Roxbury, playing here in this very park, could rise up in the ranks serving his community, gain important leadership experience in another city, then return home to become the next commissioner for the Boston Police Department. We are joined here today by members of our search committee, by elected officials and leaders in our community, across the Boston Police Command staff, across clergy, neighborhood associations. I want to recognize the elected officials who are here with us. Uh, City Councilor Tanya Fernandez Anderson, welcome to her district. Thank you for joining us and for your leadership. State Representative Liz Miranda, and District Attorney Kevin Hayden. I think that's why I got here. Um, and thank you so much to all of you for, for being here. Today I'm excited to introduce Michael Cox as the leader for the Boston Police that our department, our city, and our communities need in this very consequential moment. The task of the Boston Police Department is to deliver public safety through the lens of public health and community trust, and it's not a simple one. It requires collaboration across the department and across our city. Its success depends on effective leadership at every level, including at the very top. That leadership begins with our police commissioner, who sets the tone and standard in ensuring that our officers are living out the department's values each and every day, supporting community members, and building partnerships. They must be someone who understands intimately the consequences of inequity and injustice. And they must be ready and willing to do the work required to not only repair these harms, where they exist, but root out the injustice that creates them. Following a rigorous six-month search and selection process led by our search committee, we have found someone who's ready to take on this responsibility and serve all of Boston's communities. So I want to start by thanking the members of our search committee whose broad range of perspectives on our criminal justice system added to the rigor and intentionality of this important process. Justice Geraldine Hines, who chaired the committee and ran a tight ship a former Justice of the Massachusetts Supreme Judicial Court and former public defender. Bishop William E. Dickerson, senior pastor at Greater Love Tabernacle Church and former longtime chaplain for the Boston Police. Admiral Forrester, who works every day to empower our young people as executive director of Teen Empowerment. Ed Davis III, who served as commissioner of the Boston Police for seven years and Professor Jasmine Gonzalez-Rose, who couldn't be here with us today, but who represents all of us in her work at Boston University and at the BU Center for Anti-Racist Research. I so especially want to thank Superintendent-in-Chief and Acting Commissioner Greg Long for his partnership and insights throughout this process and in the many, many months that he has been steering our department and the city. As part of this search, the committee met with community members across Boston to ensure that our next commissioner will reflect the needs, values, hopes, and dreams of our residents. We heard from community leaders and police officers, family members, and our young people, and that process led us to the outstanding individual I'm proud to announce today, our soon-to-be commissioner, Michael Cox. The committee was impressed by the wealth of experience that Chief Cox brings with him to this role, in addition to his creativity and community-oriented approach to public safety. For nearly three years, he's been serving as a chief of police in Ann Arbor, Michigan. And I had the chance to speak directly with leaders in Ann Arbor to apologize to them, <laughs> but also to hear how much he has impacted that community about his stellar leadership in building communities, in being a sounding board, in partnering across the spectrum, in following what is happening across the country, taking the best practices, and constantly innovating to provide supports through his leadership. Before that post, he served for 30 years with the Boston Police Department, gaining experience across every bureau in the department. 
Chief Cox was raised right here in Roxbury and also lived in Dorchester for years. And we are so glad to be welcoming him home to Boston, a city and community he knows so well. <laughs> having grown up here, having served in all of the roles within the department and, in other, and elsewhere, he is uniquely positioned to build the public safety infrastructure that Boston deserves and continue building on the community trust and community policing that our city has led on for decades. This infrastructure will focus on addressing the causes of crime, prioritizing the health and safety of all of our residents, and driven by and rooted in our community. Of course, our work doesn't end with today's appointment, because rebuilding trust and ensuring the health and safety of all our residents is an ongoing process. It's a responsibility that we share across city government. And so thank you again to our search committee, for our communities, that we, for making sure we selected the best possible person for what is one of the hardest jobs in this city, Chief Cox will officially return to the Boston Police Department as Commissioner Cox on August 15th. I want to once again thank our acting commissioner, Greg Long, for all of his advice and partnership and so much that he's had to take on in just the short time that I've been in this office and for his uh, continuing leadership at the department as he will stay as superintendent in chief for this department. Thank you, Greg, for your continued service and to the command staff. And I want to thank the Cox family, some of whom I know are here today from all over, because we know that this service is a family service and a family sacrifice. And so we're so thankful to you for giving us this chance to have the leader that we need.